Hi there, my name is Vic Veer and I'm an ENT surgeon and this video is a quick update to the video that I did on earwax some years ago. If you didn't see that video that's playing in the background, briefly what I did was I put different eardrop solutions into different test tubes with earwax in to see which solution was the best at getting rid of earwax. Predictably on the internet I got lots of criticism, particularly with the choice of drops I used and also because I didn't warm up the solutions to body temperature. I think people said this because they think that earwax is somehow related to candle wax but I'll talk about this later. I'll try not to overlap with the information I gave out in the last video. For example, in this video I won't be talking about the transport system in the ear that naturally pulls the earwax out and also why cotton buds don't actually work and how they disrupt the migration of wax and ear cells out of the ear. So just like last time I asked three separate patients to donate their earwax to YouTube Science and I used all three earwax donations in each of these five test tubes as equally as I could. And just like last time I used olive oil in the first test tube. Olive oil appears to be the standard advice given to people with earwax problems, so that has gone into test number one. Last time I used hydrogen peroxide using an English preparation, which also seemed to have some glycerine or glycerol mixed in. In America, however, it seems you can get 3% hydrogen peroxide as an eardrop without any other additives. As you can see, it starts foaming up straight away, and I do appreciate that these bubbles could somehow get behind the earwax, and possibly then the wax is pushed out of the ear canal by the effervescence. I have done a little bit of digging to try and find out why hydrogen peroxide is not available in the UK as a neat eardrop. And I think it's because of the risk of permanent hearing loss. There is one study performed on sand rats where they poured 3% hydrogen peroxide into the middle ear of these poor little creatures and eventually 25% of them lost their hearing altogether and the rest had damaged hearing. I did however find a paper on chinchillas where the effect was not as significantly damaging when a small amount of hydrogen peroxide was left transiently in the middle ear. So it does seem that hydrogen peroxide is toxic to the inner ear but only very slightly so. The peroxide ions seem to damage the DNA and proteins within the human human cells and so therefore the concern is that if large amounts of hydrogen peroxide got into the middle ear via large eardrum perforation then there is a chance that you may lose some hearing. I'm only guessing therefore that this is the reason why this is not recommended in the UK but apparently this is available in America. The next drop I used was Dubrox which I had to import from America because it's just not available in England at all. This is actually carbamide peroxide which again releases peroxide ions similar to hydrogen peroxide but it is roughly three times weaker. Interestingly this preparation looks similar to the hydrogen peroxide found in England as it seems to be mixed in with some glycerine. I'm guessing that they do this to prevent it from going through small perforations through the eardrum. Looking at it however it doesn't seem to foam up as much as pure hydrogen peroxide. The next test tube is just sodium bicarbonate drops which is often recommended in England and looking at the results from the last video this works rather well. The only thing I really don't like about sodium bicarbonate is that it is an alkali rather than an acid. You'll see from the other video that earwax is acidic with a pH of roughly 5.5 to 6. This acidic environment in the ear canal helps prevent infections from growing in there. I do worry about using sodium bicarbonate because it would counteract the acid and potentially lead to the ear becoming more at risk of getting an ear infection. Hydrogen peroxide and Dubrox are both acidic and therefore shouldn't cause this problem. The last thing I notice is that many people who use sodium bicarbonate feel that their ear becomes quite itchy and again I cannot help worrying that this is affecting the skin on the inside of their ear. In the last test tube I used steam distilled water. Now the reason why it has to be steam distilled is because when the water vapour passes through the air, it interacts with the carbon dioxide there and becomes slightly acidic, giving it a pH of roughly 5.5 to 6, which is exactly what we're looking for. Other types of water roughly have a pH of 7 or relatively neutral and therefore can wash away the acid inside the ear. This is why we tell people not to put water in their ear because it can lead to infections. This is the reason why external ear infections are also known as swimmer's ear. In the other video I used something known as ear calm spray which is effectively just acetic acid or vinegar. Professional swimmers often use ear calm spray after a swimming session to prevent them from getting ear infections precisely because the water neutralizes the acid inside their ears making them vulnerable to this type of infection. In this experiment I didn't use ear calm because it's quite expensive and it's not designed for dealing with earwax but you can see the results in the other video if you want. What I'm going to do now is jump forward about five minutes so you can see the results of these eardrops on the wax. As you can see olive oil really hasn't changed the consistency of the earwax at all and if you have time you can look at some earwax medical literature 
which shows that it doesn't really do an awful lot, but for some reason doctors still suggest it and people still use it. 3% hydrogen peroxide has worked rather well, and I think you can see that the bubbles are going all the way up the side of the test tube, which I think could possibly push out earwax from the ear canal. But for the reasons I've described before, this is not something that I would prescribe, as I'm rather scared of causing permanent hearing loss to a patient. As you can see, Dubrox has caused some foaming around the earwax, and it has made it rise to the surface. But the fact that it is not readily available in England means it's very unlikely that I would prescribe it, but it is interesting to see its effect on earwax. I am slightly concerned also about the peroxide component to it, but again I think that the risk is quite low. Looking closely at sodium bicarbonate you can see that it has broken down the surface layer of the earwax, and if it wasn't for the fact that it was alkali, it is something I would certainly recommend. I guess one option would be to use sodium bicarbonate, and then afterwards use ear calm to acidify the ear canal again. I think in this experiment it is very clear that steam distilled water works very well. You can see the sediment at the bottom and small bits of earwax left behind. Apart from the fact you can't actually obtain steam distilled water as an eardrop, I would say this was the most effective and safest option available. The last part of the experiment was to discuss the impact of warming up the solutions to body temperature. I had an awful lot of comments in the last video saying that the wax would have melted if there was at higher temperatures. I think people need to understand that earwax is not like candle wax. Earwax is mostly protein with some fatty acids and cholesterol in it, which makes earwax closer to skin or fingernails rather than candle wax which is closer to petroleum. Anyway just to prove it I warmed up all of these test tubes on my radiator until I got to about 50 degrees celsius or roughly 120 degrees fahrenheit. As you can see here I've used a cooking thermometer but because the temperature dropped so quickly I can only show you that the temperature was about 40 degrees celsius or 100 degrees fahrenheit. I'm hoping this now lays to rest the thought that earwax will just melt like a candle and pour out of the ear. Anyway I hope you found this update video useful and if you want more information please have a look at the other video which I did a few years ago. Thanks a lot and do take care. Bye bye.